Hello everyone, I am Yashreen Khan and today we will be discussing the landmark cases on Muslim law. So, the first case law we have is Narendakat versus Parakkal. This case is related to the issue who is a Muslim. The court held in this case that if a person is born of Muslim parents, he will be a Muslim and it is not necessary to establish that he observes any Islamic rites or ceremonies. Such a person will continue to be a Muslim till he renounces Islam. The case law we have is Anis Begum versus Muhammad Istifa Wali Khan. This case is related to the nature of Muslim marriage that whether a Muslim marriage is a mere civil contract or a religious sacrament. The court in this case held that marriage in Islam is not regarded as a mere civil contract but a religious sacrament too. The court further explaining the issue held that the dower in Muslim marriage cannot be compared to the sale price nor can the principles governing the sales of goods be applied in all their details. Further, the contract for sale of goods can be cancelled if a portion of the price has not been paid. Even if the goods have been once delivered, they may in such an event be returned. But if the solemnization of marriage has taken place and a part of dower remains unpaid, it would be absurd to think that the marriage could be cancelled by the wife at her will. The next case law we have is Abdul Qadir versus Salima. This case is related to dawar, which is also known as meher. The court in this case held that dawar is only the sum of money or other property promised by the husband to be paid or delivered to the wife in consideration of marriage at the time of marriage. And even when dawar is expressly fixed or mentioned at the time of marriage ceremony, the law confers the right of dawar upon the wife as a necessary effect of marriage. The payment of dower is enjoined by the law merely as a token of respect for its object, that is women. However, not mentioning of dower is not absolutely essential to the validity of marriage. The next case law we have is Buzlur Rahim versus Shamsun Nisa. This case is related to restitution of conjugal rights. In this case, it was held that if a party to a marriage contract has withdrawn from the society of other without any valid reason or has neglected to perform the marital obligations, the aggrieved party may bring a suit in a civil court for restitution of conjugal rights. However, this right is not absolute. There are a number of valid defenses available to a wife in a suit for restitution of conjugal rights which are mentioned as follows. Due to the cruelty of husband, it is unsafe to live with him or husband neglects marital obligation or marriage is irregular or husband has made an outcast from the society of wife. The next case law we have is Muhammad Ahmad Khan versus Shahbanu Begum. This case is related to the maintenance of Muslim divorced wife under section 125 CRPC and Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Divorce Act. The court in this case held that the section 125 CRPC is secular in nature and not in conflict with any particular religion or personal law. There is no conflict on question of Muslim husband's obligation to provide maintenance for his divorced wife who is unable to maintain herself. Further, the court observed that payment of meher or dawar by the husband to wife do not mean the maintenance under section 125 is liable to be cancelled on such payment. Meher or dawar is not payable on divorce but is payable on marriage. The Shahbanu verdict of the Supreme Court created disquiet and angered the Muslim community that Section 125 CRPC as interpreted interfered with the Muslim personal law by enlarging the Muslim husband's liability to pay maintenance to divorced wife from either period to her whole lifetime or until she remains unmarried. 
Formerly, the liability of maintenance of divorced wife shift towards her new husband if she remarries or to her parents if she remains unmarried. If parents or family do not have financial ability to do so, then this liability shift towards Baitul Mal, a state fund for social welfare causes. In absence of any such fund in India, this liability is placed on the shoulder of state works board and nearly all the work boards in India are themselves relying on state government. After this case, the legislature enacted Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Divorce Act to specify the rights which a Muslim divorced woman is entitled to at the time of divorce and to protect her interests. That's all for today. Thank you.